Okay. All right. So welcome back to the stove. This is episode 12. We have a lot to do today. So we're going to start right now with me. Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the Celtics to start with. So the Celtics game six, let's start there. I am mad. Well, not as mad as I was, but mad still about how that ended because they look like they didn't really want to be on the floor that night. So that's kind of upsetting, but this is going to be more of like a thank you because Boston very proud of the team, by the way, because they went way farther than I thought they would. He had them losing in the first round. Um, we won't, we don't I had them in the finals at least, but Boston didn't have to say that. was not, they weren't even 500 in January. They, played great in the last three or four months of the year. They played really well. I thought against the Nets, the Bucks, they had good moments and bad. The Heat, they had some really good moments. It's a really bad moments against the Heat. And the Warriors, I really didn't think they played that bad against the Warriors, really. I mean, I, they won game one. They lost game two, which I didn't really expect them to win game two. They won game three really well. Game four was really the most angering one because game four was one that I thought Boston could have easily won. They were really should have won that game. Even though Steph scored 43 or whatever he had, Boston should have won that game, but Boston can't close games. So that was not good. Game five, okay. But game six, game six, they were just kind of psychologically beat, I felt like, at that point. So, But it's a, it was a really good year. It was impressive. There's a lot to build on. Obviously, there's going to be a lot coming back in the East. The East is stronger than it once was when LeBron was cakewalking through the East. Um, just had to throw a LeBron slander in there. But Always. the 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 East, Middleton's going to be back. Obviously, moves could be made. Um, you know, Miami might get Bradley Beal or might get somebody good, um, you know, the Sixers, James Harden, you don't know how good he's going to be. Um, who else am I forgetting? Uh, Toronto. I don't think Toronto is going to be as good next year because I think Toronto is going to start to sell. And I think, hot take, we could see Pascal Siakam be traded at Ooh. some point during the offseason. Um, it's going to be a blockbuster. I could see that happening. The Nets, we're going to get into that because I've got some They're takes. I've done. got some takes on that. Yeah. But Boston – Right now, their biggest challenge right now is certainly the Bucks, in my yeah. opinion, because I still think they're better than Miami is. And the Bucks with Chris Middleton, I don't know if Boston's better. If they had Bradley Beal, they might be better. But so it'll be interesting to see. This isn't a hot moment. Let's get into the Braves. So the Braves won 14 in a row, then lose two out of three. What? Say it again. These two out of three. How many? To Chicago. How many? So we're not even going to say their name. We're just going to say Chicago. The we're just going to leave it there. Say it. <laughs> we're the Cubs. Got beat by Chicago. Go Cubs, go. Who is what, 24 and 40 or something right now? That was a low blow. <laughs> but, hey, we won the series. That's all that matters. Yeah, well, we'll see who goes farther this year. But um, we'll get the anyway, same amount of rings this year. Yeah, okay. But I'm just saying. The Braves did beat the Giants last night. That was an absolutely excellent game, by the way. Mm. The Braves, that was a pitching duel because it was Logan Webb and Max Fried, which I mm. kind of figured would be a pitching matchup. Um, the Braves were up. Max Fried held them down all the way through the seventh. He gave up one run that made it uh, one to one. And then Arcia walked it off in the night with a single to left center, left, short left. Yes. So. It was a really good game. Um, So the Braves are certainly playing a lot better. The Mets are playing pretty well, too. So that's kind of unfortunately kind of the problem right now. But Buck Showalter says there should be a utility player in the All Star game. That's going to make money. But um, because Buck Showalter is all about monetary value. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We already have a DH. Anyway. But that 
That was a stupid comment. I don't like Buck Showwalker. I think Buck Showwalker is overrated, but anyway. I mean, at least DHs are fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, Showwalker's better than the manager they had last year. But Who was it? Mickey Calloway or something? I think so. (laughs) God, (laughs) you were horrible. But anyway, that's Hoff's hot moment right now because the Celtics, the draft's coming up. I'll probably have a hot moment on that one because I'm sure the Celtics will make some ridiculous pick. But – you know, the Celtics know. pick pretty well, yeah. so I, would I think. say so. Especially after y'all fleeced the Seventy uh, Sixers and the Nets. Yeah, yeah, I remember that? We got Tatum instead of Fultz. We got Tatum and Robert Williams for Markel Fultz. Anyway, that's all. So let's go to MLB news. So right now, let's pull it up. So bring it out. Whip it out. Um. So. <laughs> This is a G-rated show. So no, it's not. Mm-hmm. PG thirteen. The Yankees are fifty and seventeen right now, which is really impressive. The Dodgers and the Padres are tied right now. I didn't think the Padres would be this good what? right now. I didn't know that. The Dodgers are fifty and twenty-five. What? The Padres are fifty forty. No, I'm sorry, fifty and four. I can speak forty and twenty-five. The yeah. Padres are forty-two and twenty-seven. So yeah. they're tied right now. The Giants are three and a half back right now. That's a really good division. Yeah, the Braves are five and a half back from the Mets. The Cardinals are one back from the Brewers after the Brewers had a horrendous start to the year, but now they're playing well. Yeah, they're but back. The Cubs are 25 and 42. And we just lost 12 to 1. And they're only the one and a half better than the Pirates <laughs> are. What did you say? Are. <laughs> Just stop. I we don't got to hear about that. I love we them. know the Cubs are bad. We know. The Rockies are 30 and 37. <laughs> 30 and 37 in their last place in the division. Shows how good that division is. The Nationals are 24 and 46. <laughs> we swept in the other day. Who's the worst team in the league right now? Is it? I think it's the Pirates. Is it the Reds? No, it's the Pirates. The Reds are 23 and no, I think it is the Reds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's, no, it's, it's really the, the A's. Royals. Oh, yeah, the A's. Yeah, the yeah, they're Royals. pretty. They're pretty good. What is wrong with the White Sox? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they don't have as much talent as they did last year, but still, I mean, they should still be good. Yeah, I it's mean, Tony La Russa's fault. It, it is. They're never going to win a World Series with Tony La Russa doing that. Um, let's talk about the AL East with the Yankees in first place, twelve games above the thirty-eight and twenty-nine Blue Jays. The Red Sox are thirteen and a half back, and the Rays are fourteen back. The Yankees are just having an insane year, and Aaron Judge could possibly—he's probably going to win AL MVP, right? Yeah. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> yeah. My, my dog made noise. So. But anyway, <laughs> the right now, just going back to what we, our predictions kind of were earlier in the year. Yeah. So obviously, I had the Braves winning the NL East. I still think the Braves can easily win the NL East. I don't think the Mets are going to like falter down the stretch again. I just don't think that's going to happen anymore. But I think they're still going to finish second. I still don't think the Mets will probably finish second. Well, the right Phillies now. will finish third. The Phillies will probably make the playoffs this year because they're 36 and 32 yep. right now. The Phillies have been playing really good lately. Yeah. Um, their defense is actually playing well, which is surprising. <laughs> but um, the Marlins I just remember are, when Alec Bone made like three errors in a row. That was and he said he didn't want to be there. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. No, I wouldn't either. The Marlins are twenty nine and thirty six. That's kind of disappointing because I, I thought the Marlins would be a little bit better this year. They, too, they were my sleeper pick too. But not oh in the division, wait, but. I read it wrong. What? The Pirates are in third in the division, and the Reds are yeah, in last. Gonna... Yeah, that means the Pirates are better than the Cubs. <laughs> listen, listen. Let's go over the Cubs schedule while we're at it, and then just look at what happened the other day. What was it last night? Twelve. Y'all lost two out of three against us. Shut up. Yeah, but. We beat y'all earlier in the year. so Yeah, but we just beat y'all, and y'all shouldn't lose to us ever. So they, they got swept. <laughs> Didn't y'all lose 10 in a row? <laughs> yeah, we did. Didn't y'all lose two straight after winning 14 in a row to us? Aren't we 8-2 and two in our last 10? Aren't we actually supposed to be two bad? And eight. Yeah, you are bad. Exactly. It's baseball. Anything can happen in one day. Two days. Two. Okay, well... <laughs> Anyway, we saw the Dodgers get there. get swept by the Pirates earlier than in the year. You think the Pirates are better than the Dodgers? No, but okay, I didn't think so. All I'm saying is, 
People expect us to be bad. Okay. So. Well, we're done with baseball. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the draft. The NBA draft. Yeah. Um, who do you think is going number one? I think Chet Holgram is going to go number really? one, but it should be Jabari Smith. Yeah, he's the best player in the draft. Oh, yeah, he's life. Kevin Durant. He's 6'10". He shot 44% from three last year, and he can post up. Exactly. And everything, which reminds me of Carolina. I read something about, it, something about Pete Nance. Pete Nance, they said, isn't as good of a shooter as Manic. Not quite as good of a shooter as Manic is. Yeah. But he's much better defensively with – I don't know how much that is saying, but he's better defensively, and I'm he can post sure up better. better. Defender than he can post Manning. up better, and he can rebound better than Manning. That's great. So, and he can't shoot three. I mean, he shot forty percent. So yeah, like that's he's not bad. bad at all. But Manning, Manning was a really good shooter. So, yeah. Well, at times, but definitely not in the second half of the championship game. Don't start. God, I remember the Baylor PTSD. game where when he nailed someone in the head. He should not have gotten uh, ejected for that. I'm sorry. He should. That was ridiculous. But, Jabbar, so you're a Timberwolves fan. Who do you want the Timberwolves to get? You, well, you just mentioned to me uh, earlier. Ben Matherin. Uh, ben Matherin is who. Excuse me. Shut up. <laughs> Professional. Um, yes, we are. Professional Mike Etiquette. Yeah. Um, but I, you mentioned uh, Ben Matherin earlier, and um, I think that is exactly who the Timberwolves should go after because I think he's an absolute steal of the – I think he's the steal of the draft. He's projected to go later in the draft, but I think we should get him because I think he's going to be a great player. He showed incredible flashes last year, especially in that one game against, what, TCU? Yeah. He played incredible that game. They wouldn't have won that game without him. No. Actually, they would have got blown out without him. Yeah. But. I think – I think he has a lot of upside, so that's who, exactly who I think the Timberwolves should be taking. For the Celtics, they have a second-round pick. I don't know if Dalen Terry's going to fall all the way to the second round, but if he does, if he does, as long as he doesn't dunk the ball, we remember when he dunked the ball with like point. <laughs> you remember that when he just kind of just laid it up. Anyway, oh if Dalen Terry is available, because Dalen Terry's a really good defender and all Boston seems to care about at this point in defense, so yeah. if Dalen Terry is a good defender. I think Boston should try to get him. I doubt he's going to be there in the second round. But if he is, Boston he should be. think about getting Dale and Terry. They could even trade though he's up. Probably. Well, we don't need to trade him more. Even though Bradley Beal is coming our way. I don't know. He might go to Miami. I don't think so. He's like best friends with Jason Tatum. And Jason oh, yeah. Tatum's trying to push for Boston yeah. to get him right now. I think he will go to Boston. I'm just, I'm Jason Tatum's turning into the GM. <laughs> as long as we don't get a Russell thing? Westbrook. <laughs> Well, that, that was the worst decision LeBron ever made. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to him later. <laughs> All right. Do you have any more news you want to talk about? Not in the NBA. Not I mean, the Kyrie, I guess. Yeah. All right. Let's talk oh, about. Wait, one thing I wanted to ask you first. Sorry. Where do you think Paolo Bencaro is going to land? I think he'll end up going third. Third overall? Who has the third pick? Thunder. Are they Thunder? second? No. Let's does check. the Thunder have third? Thunder have so many picks they in the do. next few years. They're going to be loaded in like three years. They have Josh Giddy. <laughs> I like Josh Giddy. He's good. Yeah, so is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, You're going to find out the players that we're high on that like we didn't yes. talk about because we did started this when the playoffs were about to start. Mm-hmm. So some of the players you didn't get to hear about, you're going to find out who we're high on. Yep. I love Gilgis Alexander, by the way. So, oh yeah, he's great. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, I know the Magic are first. Production value. Let's see. Okay, excuse me. The Magic, uh, the Thunder, the second. Houston, Houston. That's Houston. who it is. Yeah, I think. I think he'll go to Houston too. I mean, I think Houston could really. I think Paolo could Sacramento. fit well. Or Sacramento. Four. I don't think Paul is going to fall to four. Really? I mean, the top three are kind of sad. It's just kind of the order. But Yeah, Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, and Paolo. Paolo. Yeah. I th- honestly, I think Chet's probably the worst out of all three. I would. I am I mean, honestly, I would take Jay Nivey above Chet just yes. because I love Jay Nivey. I'm, and I am outside not. of the St. Peter's game, <laughs> he was really good this year. Yeah, but. 
I am not sold on Chet Holmgren at all. No, he's too skinny. Yes, he's. How are you seven feet tall and one hundred and ninety-five and not two hundred pounds? That's incredible. That's impressive. But anyway, that's, I don't know. But anyway, is he anorexic or something? I'm sorry if you are. But he probably still. is. Let's talk about Kyrie. So Kyrie, I have some takes on He's this. He's gone. I have some takes on this. First of all, the Nets, if you offer him a max deal, which it doesn't look like they want to That's do that stupid. right now, That's don't stupid. offer him a five year deal. He'll be don't gone do anyway. that. Anyway, if you're gonna offer him a deal, offer him two years at the most. And this is a hot take. I think the Nets should do this trade with the with the Lakers. So Ooh, yeah, Kyrie and Ben Simmons. For Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. That's a horrible trade for the Nets. You get Anthony Davis. Yeah, but you also get Russell Westbrook. And Anthony yeah. Davis only plays, what, like 30 games a year? A Westbrook-Durant reunion? Oh, God. And Westbrook turned the even... ball over just as much now as he did back in 2016. He's always turned the ball over all if the, the time. If Le- He's led the league in terms like eight times. If LeGM gets that offer... From the Nets, he should take it. And yeah, but you also get Ben Simmons out of that. Yeah, but you also get Kyrie Irving, who's going to play forty games or fifty games. But still, it, like, it's it's so it's it's an interesting one though because Anthony Davis, if he is healthy, which I think eventually he'll be healthy in five years maybe, but even though he hasn't shot a ball since April, <laughs> well, we're leaving that out. But the, if Anthony Davis – Anthony Davis is a top five player in the game when healthy and yes. playing at the top of his game. He's incredible. So, Anthony Davis, you get Russell Westbrook, who can be a productive point guard. He's productive. He does turn it over a lot, but he's always turned it over a lot. So, that's not anything new. I don't know how happy Durant is going to be about that, but I think Durant would sign off on that. Like, I think Durant would be willing to take Russell Westbrook back. I honestly I do. I think he would be willing to take Russell Westbrook back because he gets Anthony Davis. I mean, so maybe. and you know LeBron would sign off because LeBron would want Kyrie. Well, yeah, he loves Kyrie. And LeBron, I think LeBron would want Ben Simmons. That's just me. He's, I think LeBron could help Ben Simmons get his act together. So I would. I think that's a great deal for the Nets. And but, Ben Simmons, like he's a he's a great defender and a great facilitator. Mm-hmm. He can't score. When he plays, but well, yeah, but I mean. He can't score at all, but I mean, he can yeah. be a productive player on yeah. the defensive end and he assists can. wise. Yeah, and he rebounds well. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what, like six nine, six eight? Ben Simmons? Yeah, he's six ten. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Dang, I didn't know that. All right, all right. It's <laughs> a moment you have all been waiting for. We are going to give you our top thirty. Because you knew we were going to be doing this. Yeah, because you knew. You follow <laughs> us on everything, social media, and everything. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna give you, you go our top thirty. Go okay, we're gonna give you our top thirty starting point guards for the 2022-2023 NBA season. And each I'm of us can chime first. in at any time. Yep. Yep. Any of us can chime in. All right. Cool. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I've got Number... stats ready. I am ready for this. I don't have. Really... I'm well prepared. Okay. Sorry. This is going to be bad. I already know. I already see number one, and I'm not liking it already. What? Okay. Anyway, number one is Stephen Go from Curry. 30. Go 30. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, number th- number 30 is Raul Neto. <laughs> for- <laughs> the worst player. He shouldn't even be in the NBA. I know. He's he horrible. What, he's he has like 5.4 points a game? I don't know, year. but it was awful. He's, he's clearly the worst. I mean, he's awful. <laughs> number 29 – I hate to say it because I like the kid, uh, is Markel Fultz. I don't. I mean, he had so much upside coming out of the draft, I feel like. I mean, I definitely think the Sixers made the wrong pick there. but Not I think first he time. Done. True. And number 28, I, I hate putting this guy here because I think he's a very productive player. I think he's serviceable. Is Jose Alvarado, like – He's a he's a really good defender. I feel like he can steal the ball. He obviously has the Grand Theft Alvarado move. Um, everybody calls him that. Anyway, I, yeah, I know, I don't. But and number twenty seven is uh, argue arguably 
probably could have won Rookie of the Year. As, wait, did he win Rookie of the Year? Cade Cunningham. No, Scotty Barnes okay. won Rookie of the Year. That's right. Uh, number 27 is Cade Cunningham. I think he has a lot of upside. He I didn't have as good of a year as I wanted him to this year, though. I think he'll be great, though. Uh, and number 26, the Knicks starting point guard is Kimba Walker. <laughs> what happened to this Cardiac guy? Cardiac Kimba. <laughs> what happened to this guy? Like, he was so good in Charlotte, and then he went to Boston and too was small. Like, yeah, he is. And injuries. Yeah. And number 25 is Killian Hayes for the Pistons. I mean, not really much I want to say about him. I mean, he's <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, number 24, Devontae Graham. Uh, he's for the Sacramento Kings, I think, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah, uh, not much I want to – I mean, he's a great shooter. I think he's a really, really good three-point shooter. Uh, not really so much on defense. Uh, number 23. I'm already seeing something I don't like. Of course I am are. seeing something. 19. It, keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. Number number 23, Russell Westbrook. Uh, he has fallen off a cliff. Uh, he is awful now. I agree with that. He, he turns the ball over way too damn much. And now he can't do anything. Yeah. And number 22, I really like this player. I really, really like Reggie Jackson. Oh, I do too. I think he's a really, really good player, but he's more of an efficient point guard yeah. than a than a like, like a takeover game. Yeah. Right? But he is really what the Clippers need. Yeah. I think the Clippers can make the finals and win the finals yeah, next year. They're they gonna can. get Kawhi and Paul George back. Exactly. And you got Reggie Jackson, and plus they could possibly get Kyrie in the off season. Oof, I mean, that'd be tough. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think the Clippers are better than the Lakers right now. So, all right, yeah. So number twenty two is Reggie Jackson. Number twenty one, I think this guy is going to be really, really good in like a year or two. Tyrese Maxey, he really, really had a good year this year, and, and he showed well in the playoffs this year with Joel Embiid. I think those two are going to be. If Joel Embiid stays in Philadelphia, which I don't think he will, but if he does, I think they'll be a really good duo. Number 20. Oh, my. Number 20. Oh, my. Number 20 is. Number 20 is D'Angelo Russell. I mean, D'Lo is so frustrating to me because he can be so good at some time. Sometimes he can absolutely take over a game. He has some games where he just looks like a top five point guard. And then he has games where he is absolutely the worst point guard in the league. <laughs> he turns the ball over way too much. He Timberwolves got to trade him. Yes, we do. Reggie I Jackson, agree. by the way, would be an absolutely great pick. Yes, for the please. I would love Reggie Jackson. I don't think you're going to get that. No, we're not. Yeah, but uh, y'all got um, what was the center Shane y'all McLaughlin. Got? What was the center y'all got? Oh. Who is that? Oh, we didn't get a center. We just uh, rumors about Clint Capella. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean he's a, he's the good, doctor but... ordered. God. <laughs> yeah, we need another center. Go to nineteen. Number nineteen is Marcus. No, Smith. no, he's not. He's a top twelve point guard. Okay, yes, he, he won Let defensive player. No, shh. he won defensive player of the year. He, he averaged can't score. fourteen. He averaged fifteen points a game. He shot forty percent from three in their playoffs. Okay. He shot forty six or forty seven percent. I mean, okay. He I'm was a, he's a good passer. He's not the turnover problem. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown yeah, were the true. turnover problem. He's not the turnover problem. He's a better passer than people give him credit for. He's six four. Listen. He's a great defender. Him and Drew Holiday yes. are the two best yes. point guard Listen. defenders. Listen, no, I, he's not nineteen. Listen, he's not I, better than he's not worse than Fred Van Fleet. I think he's just slightly better than Marcus Smart. How? Go, explain. Yeah. Okay, number 18 is Fred Van Vliet. I will give you this. Marcus Smart is a better defender. I think he is. And a better a, offensive he, player. Yes, he is. And Fred Van Vliet. Yes. Well, Van Vliet a, can shoot. Van Vliet can shoot. But and I think that he's cannot a, do anything else. He's a better facilitator than Marcus Smart. No. Yes. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, how? How many assists did he average? I don't know. Oh, well, so. Do you know? No, but Marcus Smart averaged around seven and a half assists a game. Van Fleet didn't average that many assists a game. And Van Fleet is not a point guard. He's not a true point guard. He's a shooting guard. 
Not saying Marcus Smart's a true point guard, but Marcus well, Smart is a more well, who would be natural the, point guard well, than who, Van Fleet. Okay, well, that's just my opinion. Okay. You Keep might going. be right. I might be right. Oh, I will never know. Oh, I'm right. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay, number 17 uh, is Malcolm Brogdon. And I know he's he's not like – the natural point guard, but he runs the point a lot for the Pacers, right? He runs the point a lot for the Pacers. I think he's a great defender. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a really, really good three-point shooter. I'll I agree think, he's better than Marcus Smart. I think uh, – yeah, so – okay, it's not that I don't think Marcus Smart is not better than these guys I ranked ahead of him. I just think that – I just think they're just slightly – they do more better. Than, I don't know. I'm, it's really hard for me to explain. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whatever. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> well, I know you get sensitive about your Celtics. So, nah. <laughs> so number 16 is well, Lonzo just Ball. Hmm? Just you wait. Keep going. Lonzo, number number 16 is Lonzo Ball. Uh, he's really improved over the years, especially now in Chicago. He's shooting a lot better. Mm -hmm. He's a better defender. Um, I think he's a better facilitator now. Really gifted passer. Yes, really gifted passer. And I think – I think number 16 is right where he should be. and I agree. Okay, thank you. And number 15, I, I love oh, this Oh, no. I just saw that one. Number 15, I will absolutely Too low. I love this player, but I think he needs one more year. And then I'll, then I'll rank him a, a little bit higher. Too low. Number 15 is Darius Garland. And I love – he's so good. Like, he's an amazing scorer. I, he's great. I he could be like Kyrie. Yes, he could. And yeah, he's he's amazing. I think he could be in the top ten next year. Uh I'm probably gonna change these rankings <laughs> next year. Uh we'll do like okay, I will I'll say this. We we'll do like mid season rankings or something. Or a tier list or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, number fourteen is Mike Conley. And uh, Mike Conley, like, he's he's a true point guard. He's yeah. one of the few like true point guards like Right, Chris Paul is. Um, now, I know you're not the biggest Chris Paul fan in the world. No, but, I'm not. <laughs> but he is a true point guard. You know, the point guard. The please. But my, yeah, my point Conley, God is Magic Johnson. That's the point God. Yes, we. Know. But um, yeah, Mike Conley, true point guard, great facilitator. He's a really good shooter. Um, really good three point game. Good mid range game. <sighs> I think him and uh, Donovan Mitchell in Utah, I think they're great. Even though they're and, probably going to break up. But Yeah, I know. That sucks. But well, um, it's okay. Donovan's coming. To Boston. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and number 13, I love this player, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's so good. Uh, he's one of – he's really, really athletic. And underrated. Yes, he's criminally underrated. I think he's an insanely good player. Number 12 is LaMelo Ball. Excuse you. Thank you. Bless you. Number 12 is LaMelo Ball. And LaMelo Ball, he's so good. He's a great scorer. He's a really gifted passer as well. I think he's going to be better than Lonzo. Yes. But the first good is, pick Michael Jordan, I think, made. Yeah, I mean, you can say Miles Bridges real. was okay, but LaMelo was really yes, good. Yes, he's so good. I think I think he already is better than Lonzo. To be honest with you, probably him. right now, yeah. I mean, Lonzo. I'd say Lamelo probably has a higher ceiling, but yeah. Lamelo has the potential to be like a twenty-five, ten player. Oh wait, so. did I? I messed up. I wrote Darius Garland on here twice. Oops. We'll keep going. Oh well, yeah. just get over it. Uh, okay, number number eleven is Dejounte Murray. He's probably, if not, the best two way. Yeah, point guard in the league. Well, yeah, because yeah, he. Well, I don't know if he's best two way. That probably is your holiday, but he's a, Shante's really good. Yes, he's a great offensive Star offensive potential. player. He's great defensively. Uh, other than Spurs are, <laughs> he's not as good as Marcus Smart defensively, but he's still really damn good. He's probably a better offensive player than Smart. Yes, I think so. Okay. It, you didn't have to have that much of an enthusiastic yes. You just said, yeah, I think so. You didn't have to say yes. We'll skip number 10 because I accidentally put Darius Garland on here twice. Um, but we'll go to number Good nine. And no job. <laughs> Shut up. We all make mistakes. I don't. 
You picked the Celtics to win. Yes, you did. Um, number nine is Drew Holiday. And Drew Holiday, like he said, I think is the best two-way point guard in the game. He's a very good shooter, very good defender. Uh, good passer. Yes, great passer. Um, number eight, Jamal Murray. Now, when he's healthy, Jamal Murray is fun to watch. He's a great shooter. I know I keep saying that about all these guys, but they are. And, yeah, I think uh, – I think Jamal Murray will really, really help the Nuggets when he gets back because the Nuggets aren't going anywhere without Jamal Murray. They need him, them and him and Jokic on the court together. Uh, and number seven is a guy that we both do not like at all. We are really low on this guy, and he is one of the most inefficient players I've ever seen, and that is Trey Young. Uh, Which I hate to say that because I, I like the Hawks because the Hawks are probably my second favorite team, but – Trey, I just don't, I don't want to say I don't like Trey Young because I think he's really good for how small he is. Yeah, and I actually think Trey Young has a clutch gene in him, but I don't think Trey Young. I think just think Trey Young's just too small to be the yeah. franchise player that Atlanta wants him to be. Yeah, you know, and Atlanta loves Trey Young. Yeah. They love Trey Young. Like I've never seen Atlanta like someone probably since Matumbo. So I mean. Yeah. I mean, Dominique Wilkins. Yeah, I mean, they love Trey Young. So, I mean, yes, they do. <laughs> I don't want to say I don't like him, but I don't think he's as good. He's overrated. People think yes. he's just insane. He's not. You saw I him mean, in these playoffs. He was yeah. awful. He thinks he's as good of a shooter as Steph Curry. He's, he's not. not. He thinks he can get to the rim well. He cannot. A lot of times, he's not a good mid range shooter. He's a good free throw. He shooter. has to. What he has to do is rely on. Not him. a good defender. No. What he has to rely on is getting to the free throw line. Okay. Number six is Damian Lillard. Dame time. I love Damian Lillard. But now one thing I will say about Damian Lillard is I agree with your take on this. He is not as clutch as people make him out to be. He just he just made a, a couple buzzer beaters and, and people say. He's not unclutch. No, he's not no, clutch. He's not as clutch as people say he is. No. But, um, yeah, I think Damian Lowe is still a great player. All right, number five. <clears throat> number five, I know this might seem a little low. A but, little. But I have Luka Doncic as my number five. And my reasoning behind this is he is another inefficient scorer, which, and he is a god-awful defender. Uh I, I, Steph's I just, a god awful defender too. Yes, but he is the best shooter of all time. Yeah. And he won Finals MVP. Keep going. Okay. Shh. We'll get to him. Let's get a number three. <laughs> okay. Number five, Luka Doncic. I just laid out the reasons why. And number four, I know this might seem controversial, but I have my reasons, and let me explain. Number four is Kyrie Irving. Wait, I think. Where's Oh, I'm sorry. You're getting to Jaw. Okay. Yeah, we're getting. I, was, to I realized you had him that high. Okay. Yeah, I, I respect love that. I like Jaw. Okay, number four is Kyrie Irving. I think that Kyrie Irving is the most gifted player on this list. He is the most talented player on this list, but at the same time, he also comes with the most baggage on this list. Uh, he, yeah. <laughs> he plays half the season and then goes in the playoffs and then doesn't even play that good. Uh, in the playoffs. Nah, it's not a game one. Huh? Yeah, really. I know. He got shut down by Marcus Smart. Oh, and the then, 19th best point guard. I don't know. I probably could have ranked him higher. To be uh, yeah, well, a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'll change my list in a minute. I'll, I'll change it. Oh, well, not in a minute, but then like a couple, couple months. <laughs> That's such a big difference from a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like five minutes. Actually, no, like five months. Yeah, but. okay. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, number four, Kyrie Irving. Uh, yeah, most talented, best handles in the league easily. Great shooter, great mid-range, great finisher. Can be a good defender when he wants to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think Kyrie is great. He just has to be more available and, you know, complain less. Uh, number three, number three for me is Chris Paul. Yeah, I'm just going to let I, you go, and I'll explain it when I get to my list. Okay. Okay. I can't wait. Uh, number three is Chris Paul. I think he is the best all-around point guard in the league. I think he is the best facilitator in the game. 
I think he is a great mid-range threat. Um, he's not the greatest finisher in the world. No. And he's not the greatest three-point shooter in the world. No. But I think he is a good defender. I think he is a great facilitator. He has some of the highest basketball IQ in the league. And he definitely minimizes the turnovers. And I think without him, the Phoenix Suns would be much worse. And I think that's why he's a top three-point guard. And number two, which I think you'll agree with this a little bit more, is Ja Morant. I do. He I'm is, so glad you put him high. He is a – I don't have to be two, but that's a good place. Ja Morant is insanely gifted. Ooh. Like, he is the most athletic point guard in the game, I oh, think. Yeah. He, he is the best dunking point it's guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but Ja, he is the best dunker out of all these guys, probably. Um, he needs to work on his shooting a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's needs gotten to work, better. Yeah, he has gotten better. Needs to work on his free throws. Yeah. Um, but as far as finishing at the rim goes, and as far not as – better. Yeah, it, as far as getting to the rim, like – there is none better than John Morant, in my opinion. I think he is the best finisher out of all these guys. He is absolutely incredible. He's a good defender. Um, wouldn't you agree? John, ja, yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good defender. And, uh, yeah, I think John Morant is the second best point guard. And number one, he just won the finals MVP. He just won his fourth title in eight years. And that is, of course, Stephen Curry, best shooter of all time. Not so much on the defensive end, but um, as far as offensive goes, as, as far as offense goes, there's not much better than Steph Curry. Like, he is absolutely incredible. He averaged over 30 in the finals. He scored 40, what, 43 in that one game, just took mm-hmm. over that game. Um, yeah, I think Steph Curry is absolutely incredible. I think he's still the best point guard in the game. And that – is my top 30 point guards. Okay, so now... Let's get to the half. Okay. So... Can I chime in at any time? Yeah. Let's start at number 30. It's Raw Neat. Yes. He's the worst point guard in the league. He's awful. He's like five points a game. Not good. Number 29 is Jose Alvarado. Okay. He's... He's really not even that good of a defender. He can steal the ball. He's kind of like Steph Curry. He can steal the ball, but he's not really a good defender in terms of staying in front of you. Cade Cunningham, but steals is kind of like the the thing they look at for defense. Yeah. Steals from a point guard and it's blocks from a big man. So yeah. Cunningham at 28. I like Cade Cunningham. Not as much as I did at one time, but I still like him. I think he'll be good. Yeah. Markel Fultz, I have at 27. <laughs> 76ers, that was just a sad trade. I'm sorry, yeah, it guys, was. but it was it was bad. Number 26, I had uh, Reggie Jackson, which was kind of hard to do because I really like Reggie Jackson. It's a little low for me. I, I, I like Reggie Jackson, but Reggie Jackson is not a game-changing point guard like these other players I have a, a little bit higher on the list. So Reggie Jackson's at 26. Fred Van Fleet is 25 because Fred Van Fleet is a shooter. He is a shooter. He's not a facilitator. He is not a get to the rim. He's not a rebounder. He is not a defender. He is a shooter. And he is not that great. And he's not a true point guard. He's a shooting guard. So he's 25. Kimball's- I would still put Reggie Jackson. Uh, well. I would rather have Van Fleet than Reggie Jackson, but that's yeah. just me. I have yeah, Kim, okay. I have Kimba at twenty four. Okay. Don't look at this. I have Kimba at twenty four. Uh, you looked at mine. Let me. I have Kimba at twenty four. I don't like Kimba anymore. I don't either. Uh, I have sad. Westbrook at twenty three. I used to love Russell Westbrook. We have him at the exact same spot. Yeah, I used to love Russell Westbrook growing up, but. Not so much anymore. I have Ricky Rubio at 22. Yeah. Ricky Rubio is like a poor man's Mike Conley, so I don't really – I wouldn't even say that. (laughs) No, but I have D'Angelo Russell at 21 because D'Angelo Russell turns the ball over too much. That's not too too different. very inefficient. He was off in that series against Memphis. He did not play where he needed to be. He had like one decent game. (laughs) 
I have Mike Conley at 20, which a lot of people may think is low, but Mike Conley is getting older. He can't score as much as he used to. So I don't yeah. – Mike Conley has become more of an average point guard than this kind of above average point guard where he used to be in Memphis. So I have Mike Conley at 20. I have Kyle Lowry at 19. Kyle Lowry is the same thing as Mike Conley now. He's past his prime. He was awful in that series against the Celtics. <laughs> So yeah. Mike Conley is at 19. I have Lonzo at 18. That's who I forgot was Kyle Lowry. That's oh. who I forgot. Okay. Well, I have Kyle, I have Lonzo at 18. I really like Lonzo, but I have Lonzo at 18 because I think Lonzo needs to do more. I have John Wall at 17. I kind of just had to stick John Wall somewhere. Five years ago, John Wall was without a doubt a top five point guard in the game, maybe yeah. a top three. John Wall was really, really good at one time. He was the fastest player with the ball I may have ever seen. Oh, yeah. He could get to the rim. He was insane. He could pass. He could rebound. He's six four. He could dunk. He could dunk. He could defend. He could not shoot. But he could do everything else. So, I have John Wall at 17. I have Tyrese Maxey at 16. I like Tyrese Maxey. I'm at 16. I have Darren Fox at 15. I need to see a little more. Another guy I forgot. I need to see. I need to see a little more from De'Aaron Fox. So that's just speaking me. of speaking of speed. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox is one of the fastest oh, yeah. players. Oh yeah. my god! And he's shooting the ball better than he did at Kentucky. So, oh uh, yeah. I have Drew Holiday at fourteen. Drew Holiday to me is just a little inefficient for me to put him in this top ten category. He can be. He's a good shooter, but he's. I wouldn't call him a great shooter because he just doesn't. He's kind of inefficient for me. So I have Drew Holiday at 14. I have Jamal Murray at 13. Well, if you wouldn't mind me just uh, chiming in real quick. Um, the reason why I have Drew Holiday in my top 10 is just because he is – you can agree with this. He is a good scorer. Yeah, he is a, good, a scorer. good scorer. But he's an inefficient scorer. Well, he is still a good scorer. But, he is. And he's and he, and But the Drew fact Holiday, that he is a good scorer and a great defender. And Drew Holiday is more of a third option. On a team, then he does not. Well, he does have as Giannis we saw. And Chris well, I know, but as we saw in the game against in the series against Boston, he is just not that great as a second option on a team. Ooh. He was the second option against the Boston, and he just didn't do that well in that role. He is a great third option, but third options aren't top ten. So third option, you're fourteen. Well, as far as this just point guards go, yeah. Well, Jamal Murray is thirteen. The reason Jamal Murray is kind of low is because he's coming off a huge injury. Yeah. So I need to see him back before I can put him. If he is healthy, he's definitely a top 10 point guard. Yeah. But he's not right now, so I have him 13. I think I based my ranking on him as, like, when when he was healthy. Yeah. I think that's what I have DeJounte Murray at 12. DeJounte Murray is really, really good. Yeah. Um, He's a really good defender. Uh, He's not the greatest scorer, but he is good gotten a lot better at scoring. He has star potential, so I like to jump in where I have Marcus Smart at 11 because he won the defensive player of the year. He's a 15-point-per-game scorer. Even though people say he turns the ball over all the time, that's not necessarily true. It's Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown that turn the ball over all the time, not this Marcus is Smart. Jason it's Tatum, Marcus by the way, the, the first person in NBA playoff history with 100 turnovers. Thank you. You're welcome. But I have Chris Paul at 10. Because Chris Paul is old, and Chris Paul that is low for me. Chris Paul that is, is so old. Low. Hold on, Chris Paul is old. He stunk in that series against the Mavericks. I got all kinds of numbers. I got all kinds of numbers. He stunk in that game, okay. in that series against. He was horrible in Dallas. Whenever they went to Dallas, he was awful. He was awful in it's Game Scott Seven. It's Scott Foster's fault. It's. A, don't get started. I'm just joking. Chris Paul has stunk in the postseason, and I we, we don't even have enough show to go over all the times Chris Paul has stunk it up in the postseason. He's 6'1". He's overrated as an all-time player. He's not a top five point guard. He may be a top eight point guard, but I don't know about that. He is not. He is he overrated. Is. I hear people say he's top two or top three point guard. He is not. So Chris Paul is number 10. LaMelo is nine. Because Lamelo can score better than Chris Paul, okay. and Lamelo eventually will probably be able to. I don't even know if Chris Paul is like an accurate passer. 
Chris Paul has just got a really high basketball IQ. Exactly. LaMelo has basketball accuracy unlike I've ever seen before. So LaMelo is number nine. Oh, I don't I, – oh, okay, listen. I do think LaMelo has a better upside than Chris Paul ever did. Oh, yeah, he does. Chris Paul is 6-1. He got attacked in that series. He, did. he could not guard – he could not guard a parked car with an Uzi in that series <laughs> against the Mavericks. He couldn't do anything in that series. Okay. Oh, number eight is <laughs> number eight is Shea Gilgis Alexander. I, I love, love Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's so much fun to watch. I am one of the probably probably one of the most biggest fans of him you will ever see. Yeah. Because I love Shea Gilgis Alexander. I will watch Thunder games just to watch him play. He's so he much is fun to watch. Really good. He can shoot. He can get to the mid range. He can get to the rim. He's yes. a very good defender. He's athletic. Yes. He can do everything. He can pass. He can do all this stuff. He is really, really. I agree good. with everything you just said. I have Darius Garland at seven. I also yeah. love Darius Garland. Darius Garland. I don't need to see another year. He averaged twenty two points a game during the year, and then he backed it up by playing great against the Nets in the play in game. They lost, but he played really, really well against the Nets. So I like. Darius Garland at seven. Okay, now we get into the good stuff. <laughs> Number six is Trey Young. Mm. Fair. Darius Garland will probably be above him yes. next year. Yes, I think he will. Gilgis Alexander will probably be above him. Lamelo will be above him. One thing I will give Trey Young: he is better than Chris Paul. I'll give him that. Okay. So Trey Young Stop. is number he is not six. Than yes, Chris he Paul. is. No, he's not. Yes, he no, he he's not. stunk in the postseason. He so did Trey Young. Young. Yeah, but Trey had a good postseason last year. Chris Paul don't have good postseason. Okay. I have Damian Lillard at five. Damian Lillard is really, really good. Yes, yes he He's is. He's not as clutch as people act like. Nope. But he is really, really good. Yes. And I also give him a little bit of a little bit of niceness just because he He's stays so in Portland. And Why does he stay there? I don't know, but I like people that do that. Come so, to Minnesota. I don't know. But at yes. number four, I've got Please. Jaw. I'd like to see another year out of Jaw, so I am going to keep Jaw at four. You just four. used the same logic as I, I did for Darius. Garland. I am going to keep Jaw at he four. I, I, I am going to keep Jaw at four. The reason I don't have him higher, he stunk in that series against Minnesota. He was not good in that series, and then he was very good against Golden State. That's too inefficient for me. He's got to be better than that. All right, Kyrie is number three. If if Kyrie played 82 games a year, if every single player played 82 games a year on this thing, I would take Kyrie Irving at number one. Because Kyrie, when he plays 82 games, he is better than Steph Curry. I don't care what people say. He is better than Steph Curry. So he, can, he has a better handle. He's a better finisher. He yeah. can shoot better in the mid-range. He's a better defender. Steph is a better shooter. Steph is a better passer. Those are the only two things that Steph Curry is better than him at. Well, There's nothing he, else that Steph Curry is better than Kyrie at. And Kyrie is definitely more clutch than Steph Curry. I see all these things that say Steph Curry is a clutch player. Steph Curry is not a clutch clutch. player. I think he's marginally clutch. With two points in the fourth quarter in game one? That's what clutch players do. So Kyrie is number three. He's clutch in every single other game. Game three? What did he score in game three? Like five. Well, he does Number have clutch two. moments. I'm sorry. When? When in the playoffs does he have a clutch moment? Well, in what when was it? Game was it game five where he scored forty something? Which one? Against who? The Celtics this year. He scored forty three? Yes. Okay. Well, that, what, is what? that not clutch? Well, yeah, because he's a front runner and once he gets the lead, yeah, he's great. But have you seen Steph Curry go toe to toe with a team and then be able to be able to carry them to a win? No, you have not seen that. That he does, does not do that. He's not had a Kyrie Irving shot. He has not had all this stuff. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. So, speaking okay, of Steph, let me, let me let me say something real quick. I do agree that Kyrie if is Kyrie if Kyrie played eighty two games. If Kyrie played 82 games, which he's not, but if he did, you would take him over Steph. Yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah, yeah, you would because he's but a better he player. But he doesn't. He is play more talented. Games. But he doesn't play 82 games. 
No, he doesn't. But I'm just saying how. Well, that's why I have Steph at two. Thank you. Because Steph is two. Steph is the best shooter probably of all time. Yes. He is very inefficient from three, but no, he's not. He was 0 for 9 one game. He's one had 2 game. for 10 games. He, he shot over 40% from three. He shot 27% or something in 2016. We don't have time to go through all the times that Steph has stunk it up. Speaking of Chris Paul Whatever. in the postseason, we don't have time to go over the amount of times Steph he's has not stunk it up. He's not an inefficient player. In the postseason. Year. You don't think Steph Curry? No. Steph Curry is not an inefficient three-point shooter. No. He shot like 40% from the three-point line this year. He shoots – okay. He shoots – he'll have a in game – regular season, He'll have a not. game where he shoots six for ten or seven for ten. He'll have a game where he shoots ten for ten, two for ten, and then four for 14. That's every player. Steph does it all the time. It's like every other game. Every other game he's like that. He does that all the time. Game one, he was really good. Game two, he didn't play very well from the three. Game three, he didn't shoot it very well. Game four, he shot great. Game he five, he shot atrociously. Game five, we're talking about shooting. I'm talking about three point shooting. How efficient okay. is he? But he still shooting. got over forty percent from three. He shot thirty nine percent from three this year. So oh, it wasn't wow. forty. No, you said forty. Okay, Steph is two. We don't have enough show to go over the amount of times Steph has stunk it up in the postseason because he's not even in my top twenty of all. This time. is something we really disagree about. If you could, we're not. He's not even in my top twenty of all time because. It, okay. Okay. You have him in the, the top great. ten. You have him in the top yes. ten. He's, he's one of our balls defense. MVP. What defensive liability is in the top ten basketball player of all time? What defensive liability is a top ten basketball player of all time? Who? Hmm. Michael? No. no. LeBron? No. no. Magic? No. no. Larry? No. no. Uh, Bill Russell? No. no. Will? No. no. Who else have we got? Shaq? No. no. Uh, Tim Duncan? No. no. Oh, okay. Oh. But I do but think. What? I do think Steph Curry is just so good offensively; it just outweighs his defense. Who are you taking out of the top? Tim 10? Duncan. You're taking Tim Duncan, who won five finals out of the top ten. Yes. So he's five and one in the finals. He wasn't the greatest at anything. Though. He's the greatest power forward of all time. Tim Duncan. You're taking Tim but Duncan out of the great top. At one single thing, though. Tim Duncan? Well, no, okay, hang on. I mean, Tim, I need to rephrase that. He is not yeah, the greatest so. at one single thing. He is not the greatest at one single LeBron's thing. LeBron's not the greatest at one single thing either. What is he the greatest at? He's the greatest. The greatest what? Hello? He is the greatest at something. I don't at know. At what? Because if that's your if that's your argument, Larry Bird's not the greatest well, at the, some at, at at something. Obviously Michael is. Obviously yes. Shaq is. I mean, Magic was the best passer. Michael was the best probably finisher. Yeah. I mean LeBron's not the greatest in something. So that's just not – Kobe wasn't the best at something. What was Kobe the best at? Nothing. Anyway, let's keep going. Luca's at one. I disagree. Luca's at one because – I just think if you are indisputably the greatest at something, you should be in the top ten. Who do you consider the greatest defender of all time? The greatest defender of all time? Mm-hmm. Honestly, probably Michael. The greatest defender of all time you consider Michael? I mean, he's up there. Okay. I mean, you got Scottie Pippen, obviously. Well, he's not even in the top 15. I know, but you're talking about greatest defender. You said if you're the greatest at something, then you should be in the top 10. Like, undisputably. Like, nobody disagrees that they're not the greatest at that one single thing. Okay. Who do you consider the greatest defender of all time? Me? Yeah. I would consider – I would probably consider either Shaq, just because of how big he was, or – and he averaged three blocks a game one year. Or I would consider Hakeem or Duncan Robinson. There's a lot of people in it, but none of them besides Shaq is in the top ten. Well, is he not the greatest I mean, you're taking Tim your Duncan – 
Do what? Is he not the greatest defender in your opinion? Who? Shaq. I, no, not of all time. I'd say Akeem's probably the greatest defender, but Shaq's in the top three for me. Yeah, but it could be like debatable, right? I mean, probably. Yeah, yeah exactly. My point. You well, can't. Curry is just the greatest shooter. Period. JJ Reddick's probably the best free throw shooter of all time, but he's not in the. Throws. I'm talking what? about like no, actual. No, you just shooting. said undisputed. JJ Reddick is probably the best free throw shooter of all time, but he's not in the top ten. I'm talking about finishing. I'm talking about shooting. I'm talking about defense, and I'm talking about. So who's your greatest defender of all time, Michael? My greatest defender of all time, Michael. You think Michael? What about for a big man? Oh, for a big man? Yeah, probably Shaq. Okay. As far as defense goes, yeah. Okay, I don't have Steph Curry in my top twenty, but anyway, I mean, twenty sixteen. You can't do that. What he did in twenty sixteen. That was awful. That was absolutely. Can he do? Can he not do what he just did this year? Then, huh? He played well I don't know. Games. Why didn't he do what he did this year in 2016? It's a great question. I don't know why he's he won four finals in eight years. He's a top ten player of all time, and it took him four finals, four four titles to get one finals MVP. Andre Iguodala won a finals MVP over him. Well, Andre Iguodala Draymond not a would have won it in 2016. Durant won it in the two years after. Which is funny because most people consider Kevin Durant raw probably a better player than Steph Curry is. But nobody has Kevin Durant in the top ten. So, I mean, anyway. I guess we're just going to have to disagree. But Luka is one because Luka is just – he's so good. He's basically better than Steph at everything besides shooting. And defense. I don't think he it's really that. close, but I'd probably give the nod to Steph, which is kind of horrible to say. Yeah, I am. Luka, I'm, oh I say I'm biased. I love Luca. Luca's I do too. Probably my probably outside of Boston, my one or two favorite player outside of Boston. I yeah. love Luca. Me too. He's a really good passer. He's a really good rebounder. He's good crafty. Score. He can finish at the rim. He can really score. When he gets going from three, man, you can't yeah, stop him. He's a very it. streaky shooter, though. He is, very as streaky. Curry is a streaky shooter. But anyway. I'd say he's more consistent than Luka. Anyway, that's our top 30. God, yeah. this is going to be fun for the next seven times. But yes, it is. <laughs> God. I can't wait for centers. God. I think we'll honestly you agree know on who's going to be my number one. I swear, if Cat is number one, <laughs> me, Al. <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Cat. I actually think centers is one thing that we'll agree more on. Probably. I yeah. feel like point guards is the most controversial that we yeah. have. Yeah, it is. You know, like just, it's just I because like of Curry forwards. and Paul. It's just because of those two. Yeah. I have Steph at two. It's not like I have him at like 12. I, know. I mean, I, know. I have him at two, but all time he's not a top 10 player. No. In my opinion, Okay, we're going to go over this. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Okay. So we have Michael, we have Magic, we have Shaq, LeBron, yes. Yes. Kobe. Yes. I have Will, I okay. have Bill, I yeah. have Tim Duncan. I have Tim Duncan. That's eight. That's eight. Who else am I thinking of? I'm forgetting somebody. Larry Bird. Larry. I'm not forgetting. And Kareem. And Kareem. That's ten. Okay. Well, So I you was... think Curry is better than who? I think Duncan. I think Tim Duncan right now is number eleven, and Curry's ten. Yes, but I think it is really close. Okay, so you have Curry. So can Curry move up on your list still? It's going to be really, really hard. But he has to win another Finals MVP. Okay, well, who would he take out? Will, mm. who averaged fifty and twenty, Bill, Larry. Might be, eh, probably, it might well, overtake. I'm, if you're going to say Larry, I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, no. I'm about to. Leave. Larry Bird is a top five player to me. Okay, good. I, if, if anybody was to move down the list, it would probably be either Bill or Wilt. Okay. All right. Wilt only I've has two enough. rings. I've heard it. Yeah, he averaged 50 and 20. Okay. Didn't have a ring to show for it. <laughs> He has two rings. Okay, when you're a fight, when you're an MVP, when you are unanimously MVP, yeah. you cannot have seven assists 
to 12 turnovers in the last three games of an NBA Finals. I agree with you that. You cannot do that. I know. And shoot thirty five percent from the field, and how bad he was in the fourth quarter in Game Seven. Well, LeBron had that bad of a series in two thousand and eleven against the Mavs. LeBron has won four Finals MVPs since then. Don't make me defend LeBron. That is where we. (laughs) You know I am. I'm just saying LeBron is a four time regular season MVP. He's a better defender than Steph. Yes. Don't make me defend. Well, that's just because LeBron's like six eight. And he's Look, like massively. Like, Chris Paul's six one. He can manage to defend. Why can't Steph defend? He's six three. Well, it's still, like I know, I'm not defending Steph Curry's defense. No, it's bad. He's a defense. You can't stealer. have a defensive liability when you're being attacked on defense for an entire game. You can't be in the top ten. You think people attacked Michael defensively? Hell no. LeBron? No. Shaq? Hell no. Wilt? No. Duncan? No. Okay. Bird? They didn't attack Bird. I mean, Bird won defensive win shares. I think they did, but they shouldn't. No. Bird was smart, so Bird knew how to defend with his mind. Uh, Kobe? No. Yeah, I think people would attack Kobe. Kobe? Kobe won won on the all defensive team eight times. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, I think. Steph Curry gets attacked defensively. Yeah, he does. Kyrie Irving called for a screen so he could get Steph Curry on him. He wanted Steph Curry on him when he took the final shot. He didn't want Clay. Well, that on wasn't him. even bad defense that play by Steph. No, but the but the point is, the point of that is is that Kyrie would rather go against Steph than Clay Thompson because Clay Thompson is a better defender than Steph Curry is. Clay Thompson was a better defender then. Yeah. Clay Thompson's a and better defender taller. now. Clay Thompson's also just a very good defender. He's a naturally yes. really good defender. Yes. So Steph is not. Steph, and also also keep in mind, the shortest player in the top ten is 6'6". Six, six. That's Michael. Yeah. Steph Curry, 6'3". Mm-hmm. And that's pushing it. He might be 6'2 or 6'2 and a half. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that he's. You said he was top ten. Yeah, I know. He yeah. is. He's number ten. Okay. He is not. He's better than Tim Duncan. I think he is better than Tim Duncan. Okay. But I think that it is very, very close between the two. I'm not saying that he's just blown Tim Duncan out of the water. Tim Duncan's gone. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I think Tim Duncan just moves down to eleven. Tim Duncan's in my top six. Really? Yeah. Or seven? Yes. What? Five finals. Okay, I know that. Yeah, five and one. He lost one finals, and if it wasn't for Ray Allen's shot, he would have been five and oh, or I six know. and oh. He would have been like Michael Jordan. Did he not have Ray help? Shot. Has every, Steph not every had player help? player has had help. Steph's had Clay and Draymond. And I know that. And Durant. I know, but I'm just saying. He said two say top that, 75 players and two other Hall of Famers. You could say that every single player in the top 10 has had help. Well, sure. I'd say Michael had the least amount of help. But yeah, I would too. Well, mm. I'd say Will, Scotty, prob- Will probably had yeah, the least amount of help. Yeah, that's true. But when we're talking about modern players. Okay. Yeah. I would say, you know, I would say LeBron in first go round in Cleveland. Yeah, didn't have very much. Yeah, help. Zendronas, Ilgowski. I mean, when Mo Williams is your second best player, uh, that's, that's not a problem. Good. That's not right. Good. That's it. Yeah, we're getting needed. We're getting needed. All right, we're done. Cheerio. Cheerio.